West Virginia, because of its geography, is home to all kinds of beautiful, unusual rock formations. If you look, you might spot a formation that looks like a giant stone mushroom with a narrow column of rock supporting a flat slab of rock on top of it. Some people think they look like giant tables. I suppose that's why they're commonly called tea tables. To be more exact, West Virginia folk call them the Devil's Tea Tables. People call these formations Devil's Tea Tables because that's what they are actually believed to be. There are people who will swear that the Devil himself visits them. It is said that when the devil is around, a heavy mist will shroud the tea tables and hide them. The stories associated with these rock formations are yet another example of the wonderful weirdness of West Virginia, or at least the mindset of its people. Legend goes that one day two men were traveling down the Elk River in a boat. It was a beautiful day and they had finished work, so they took their time. A magnificent tea table formation that they had often passed came into view. One of the men wanted to stop and hike up to it. Since they had time, the hiker's friend was happy to stop. He agreed to sit and wait with the boat. When they reached the tea table, they saw was hidden by an odd mist that clung on it and nothing else. The man's partner didn't give the mist a second thought and jumped from the boat as soon as they got to shore. The one started scrambling up the slope while the other sat back and kicked his feet up. He figured it would take his partner half an hour or so to get there and back. The man waited and waited and waited. Hours later, his partner stumbled back down the hill, climbing into the boat without a word. His eyes were empty, devoid of life. He never recovered. He spent the rest of his life an empty shell of a man, for he had stumbled upon the devil himself. He'd had the horrible misfortune of interrupting the devil having tea. The devil had loomed before him and looked at the man with cruel and merciless eyes. Then the devil had reached down, and with a mere pinch of his fingers, he pulled away the man's soul. He crumpled it up and sprinkled it into his cup of tea like a bit of sugar. Then the devil waved the man away and returned to his tea. This was not the first time someone unwittingly stumbled upon the devil, and it sure won't be the last. So take heed. If you see a devil's tea table, admire it from afar. If a mist surrounds it, look away and run. The Devil's Tea Tables, a poem by James Ball Naylor. O monster rock, firm poised it stands, upon a base of crumbling shale. Was shaped by Satan's cunning hand, in ages past so runs the tale, and served demons great and small, as table to their banquet ball. Though countless years have rolled away, the devil's table stands today, as firm as when with hellish glee the black imps held their revelry. It seems the feeble fluttering breath that issues from the lips of death, the faint and fickle summer breeze that stirs the blossoms on the trees, could shake the great rock's slender base and hurl it from its resting place. And yet the strongest gales that sweep across the horrid Indian deep, the polar winds, the fierce cyclones, are all too weak, combined alone, to cast the monarch from its throne. Beyond the blue Muskingum's bed, it rears its gray and wrinkled head. Though age still erects sublime, it gazes on the march of time. And towers above the verdant sod, a monument to nature's god. When years on years have hurled past, until God's dial marks the last, oh may the grim old rock still keep its Virgil on the stony steep.